Welcome back to the Printosaurus. Today in my hands here is version 1.2 of the Python AMS. We did a quick video or an overview of version one. So this is the standard Python AMS, the original release version 1.0. And as you can see, uh, we are missing the RFIDs. Uh, that was a feature that was left off for this version. Now I want to bring you version 1.02. Key changes here are these orange modules that I printed. Uh, they now offer RFID, which is a big deal. And there's also a revision done to the PCB board mounting. And really what that does is it just allows a little bit better access to uh, all your cables, your cable management there. And uh, it looks like it kind of, um, in comparison to version one, uh, the RFID, um, routing uh, for the cables and everything. It seems like it reaches a little bit better to where those would plug in. And then also the PTFE tubes seem like they don't interfere with the cables as much uh, with that being a mounted a little bit lower in the chassis here. Um, so if you have version one and you want to swap to version 1.02, you will have to print these two modules. You're gonna replace module one and module three. Um, and then you also have to print that PCB board uh, module uh, as well. Now the links to those is down below. All of this has been updated on printables and Maker World now. So you don't really have to worry uh, too much if you haven't printed any of this. You download those files, look at that profile on Maker World, and it will have everything already updated and you can just go ahead and start printing. Humebeam has done a fantastic job with instructions and everything. Uh, but I'm going to run through what I did um, that may help you make this upgrade a little easier. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with that to cover uh, this version 1.02. So here I have pretty much, a, we'll call it an exoskeleton of the version one Python. I still have that module in place. I did remove the feeders just so you could see a little easier here. Uh, easiest thing to start with is to drop all of your connections from your module and uh, also the PTFE tubes from that back um, gear uh, feeder uh, drive. So once you have those freed up, what you can do is remove one of these sides here and then uh, unscrew your module, and then just slide that thing right out of place. We're not going to use this. This is one of the pieces that you would have to reprint. So we're just going to toss this thing. Okay, um, we won't toss this, we'll set this aside. All right, so next up, what I found easy uh, in this process is, I'm gonna show you with one of these, but these are those uh, rear modules that connect uh, via that dovetail joint. So they sit here in the back, and uh, in my installation, I only did one screw at the top on each side for these. Uh, it was really hard to get to the bottom screw, uh, probably the case for you guys as well. Um, so what I did that I found easy to do the swap was go ahead and remove that screw. You've already removed the PCB board and pull your wires through. You'll have that feeder motor here and then you'll have where you connect your AMS unit and everything to your printer. Um, that's this module here. So disconnect that stuff and then pull it through and then remove these screws. Now once you have those screws removed, you should be able to just kind of wiggle this thing up. You'll have to work it uh, in each section to kind of bring that up, but you will be able to pull this whole uh, modular setup, all four of them still connected here in the back, up in one piece, and you'll be able to set that aside, and that's going to leave you with this. And then at this point, um, what we would have to do, or what I did for, for uh, getting this thing together was I removed the feeder on one, and three, because those are the modules that are going to be replaced. And then what you have to do is, since we've started on this side here, um, what you're gonna do is pull off each of those feeder gears, those front gears. Um, and you do that by the one screw and you'll start on the right side. Um, so if you're looking at this, let me flip it around. So you're actually gonna start on this side here. Um, so it would be your right side, you'll unscrew this, you'll pull that gear out. And the reason why is because each one of these screws is hidden by uh, that assembly. So pull that gear out, pull that gear out, pull this one, pull that one. And that pretty much frees up everything there. Um, you can leave uh, 
the feeder motors for two and four. Uh, I didn't find that they were in the way for doing this. Next thing you will want to do is most likely you've got all of your screws screwed in here at the top. So remove all those because we're gonna have to free up the modules so we can pull out one and three. And then also here in the front, there is screws that I used. Um, so if you use those mounting points, go ahead and pull those out and then flip it over. I had one more screw mounting point here in the front on each of these. So you'll remove those screws and at that point, uh, this assembly will be relatively free. And then now what we can do is just pop off uh, module one and we'll throw that to the side and then you can take uh, module two and remove that from three and four. So you'll be left with two modules with the feeder still on there. I did that so they're easy to identify. You'll also be able to see here in the example of me printing uh, the new module that it does have a recessed area for that uh, RFID card uh, to mount. Uh, and then once you have that in, you simply slide that in place and it will lock that card right here. And then you won't be able to pull it out or anything. It's very secure. It's a great design. Um, so really that's how you would go about uh, getting set up for this. A little tedious, obviously, because you have a lot of screws. This is a good design. So honestly, I don't think you need all of the screws, but uh, you know, get the ones in you can. Ideally, you just don't want it to fall apart when you move it around. You know, once it's stationary in the enclosure, that's optional if you're gonna use that or on top of your printer or whatever, just make sure you've got enough screws in place so that things aren't gonna move around and vibrate. Um, most importantly are probably these top screws because that's where the actual gear uh, drive for the spool sits and you want that to be as secure as possible. So don't skip out on those, but maybe skip one or two here on the bottom. I also found uh, when I printed the new stuff, I didn't use any of the heat sets or anything like that. Uh, everything attached fine. Um, honestly, I felt like the Voxel did a good job of providing heat sets and everything, but I felt like they weren't really necessary uh, for the most part because the dovetail joints are pretty tight and things stayed in place relatively easy. If you need hardware, speaking of Voxel, jump on Voxel's website. I just saw that they do now have the new version of the a or uh, Python AMS available. So you can jump on there and order the printed parts if you don't feel like printing them. You can also order your hardware. Um, that hardware kit, just to show you, comes in a bag like this, comes with the PTFE tubes, comes with everything labeled, has the bearings in there as well. I think this thing was like 25 bucks. But if you don't wanna source any of those parts, uh, here in the United States, Voxel is a great option. Uh, so look into those. Um, the printed parts and everything turned out great. Um, this is actually uh, the Voxel setup. I ended up reprinting everything uh, to kind of show you uh, how I assembled everything. So I would have two examples. So the one that I'm utilizing now is my printed version. The one I took apart was the Voxel version. So. Uh, all in all, quality is good. So I think that's enough with that there. I will leave links and to everything in the description. If you need your instructions, printables, maker world, fantastic. Humebeam has everything laid out right. Um, no issue with running through the instructions. He uh, also updates with what actually changes in each release. In this case, it was the RFID and that module. Uh, there was a minor update that he did in kind of pre-production, but uh, that one, uh, you know, no big deal there. So all in all, this thing uh, really went back together relatively easy. It is nice to have all of the features of the original AMS. Uh, so that's fantastic that uh, he's kind of looked to add those features and continue to expand on uh, what I've found so far to be a fantastic setup. Give yourself about an hour for this install, especially if it's your first time taking it apart. I've put this thing together and taken it apart a few times, just shooting video and doing things with it. Uh, so I'm relatively familiar with everything and you know, about 30 minutes to disassemble, 30 minutes to put back together. And I think you'll be uh, uh, pretty good uh, time-wise uh, right in that, that range. So make sure you have that time available. Key points, if you haven't watched the other video, when you print your feeder gears, print those in TPU, especially if this thing is going to be out in the open and you aren't doing that optional enclosure. I am doing a video on that as well. That's gonna be completely separate. I wanted to separate those, uh, not to get too far off um, from what my 
thought was here, but I wanted to separate those videos so we could you know, kind of really concentrate on the assembly of this and how this works. And then we can talk about the details of being an active system or a passive system. So look for that video soon, but back to those gears, print those and TPU, you will be happy with this being out in the open. And that is because it is not nearly as loud uh, as the PETG gears on the PETG gears. That plastic on plastic sound, you get a lot of noise with the rotation there. The TPU just kind of acts as a noise dampener. Uh, it's a softer material and it just it works really well with meshing those gears and driving everything um, you know, at a lower decibel level. That's pretty much it. I don't really have a whole lot else to cover with this. This was just a short update on the things that uh, should provide value to you when you do your replacement. And just some quick tips of what to remove and how to kind of get into this. You don't have to disassemble absolutely everything. Leave this rear section all intact and just remove those front screws so you can pop it out as a whole unit. You don't have to disconnect any electronics there or anything like that. You really just have to disconnect feeder one and three and that's because you are putting in new modules there and you have to take them off anyway. Uh, and just, you know, take your time. Don't force anything. Uh, don't over tighten anything. Uh, just get it taut. Uh, you don't need to torque down on anything. Uh, when you do, you're going to pull uh, through those plastic threads. And if you do have the heat sets, you may pull through those as well. So um, that's pretty much all I got today. Hume Beam, thanks for... Uh, uh, sharing my videos. I'm happy to help. I'm glad uh, I was able to put out some videos to help you as well. And uh, you know, this stuff's all for the community. Uh, I love making these videos for everybody. I hope this one's helpful. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.